Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer podcast. Today, I have a special guest, the boss, Mary Lamaster. She runs the company, and the reason why I brought her on today is we had another home inspection email, and uh, it came from someone named Ken. I won't say your last name. Please, if y'all want us to answer questions, this is the best way to get content, because I know a little bit about a lot, and I don't know exactly what you need. So if you if you know what you need, shoot in the questions, shoot us an email, and we'll answer your questions. So that being said, this year, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm amazed we only have, what, like two weeks and some change left? Yeah, two weeks. That's, that's pretty Maybe nuts. Three? I don't know. I've given up. I'm still in March. <laughs> yeah yeah it was funny we were talking about it earlier but like you know march when the whole covid thing started happening everything just like slowed down and it forced you to slow down for like 30 days 45 days and then it was like a giant slingshot yeah and then it was released and it was like nascar all the way to december yeah yeah like mentally or actually physically my body is still in march yeah it was, i don't know where my brain is i don't know where i am mentally at this point but physically my body is still in march but we were also talking about like that's how it is just running a business every year it, it's always gonna be something it's true i mean that's the best and worst part about running a business is there's no predictability i do enjoy that though because every day is a new adventure or disaster depending on how you look at it i like to look at it all as an adventure yes um this year certainly been one for the books. Yeah. So, but that's one thing that I always tell people. I'm like, whenever they're getting into the business, I'm always like, well, do you like to operate in a constant state of chaos? Yeah. I do. I think it's fun. You know, it's, it's just different every day. Every day is going to be something new to tackle. It is, there's not one step about running a home inspection company that's repetitive. That's true. And some of us sleep at night and the other half of us have middle of the night insomnia where we stay up at 3 a.m. <laughs> worrying about the next day, but it's okay. We're good. Yeah. yeah. We're healthy. So that being said, we renovated the office. As you can see, the whole office has been renovated and that was the main purpose of it. We have dogs. We have lots of dogs. Yes. And it ruined the carpet. Yes. Our, our Luke got old and he peed in my office a few times. All the time. Yeah. And then whenever I pulled it up, there was like mold on the carpet. Yeah. I was wondering why I was having sinus issues, but renovated the whole office and I always wanted a... I wanted a studio in my office. So we ripped everything out, built the sound wall, put in some lighting, got some nice fancy mics and boom. Yeah, and it looks really good. And you know, you should mention there was two actual frequent peers in the office. There was Luke who's just old and then there's Finney who's just revenge peeing every time we yell at him. Yes, yes, he, he literally, if I'll say something to him, he'll go down the stairs and just pee in my office. Yes, yes, and Finney's very small, so it's just dots. But yes. Still, it was enough to just destroy the carpet. Yeah, it was bad. It was it bad. Was so disgusting. But it's fine. It's all done. Yes. Now we just have to hire some painters to come in and clean up some of the nicks and dinks that happened. And boom, office complete. Yes. Thank yeah. goodness. We never have to worry about the floor in this office ever again. But that's also something that I like to relate back to just running your own business in general. It's like just... Don't hesitate. If you have a plan, just go with the plan and execute and boom, you'll have a podcast studio in your office. But just anything, you know, you want to learn to do stucco or you want to even start a home inspection business, just don't sit on it. Just start doing it. Yeah, there is a such thing as over planning coming from someone who is an over planner, <laughs> coming from someone who's already planned out the entirety of 2021. And I was, we were laughing That's at funny. this because la every year in December, I plan out the following year. So in 2019, I planned out 2020 perfectly. And by March, my entire calendar got tossed out the window. It's gone. Into yeah. the garbage disposal. Yeah. Into a septic system where it was eaten by amoebas and then spread out into a affluent field. So. Constant state of chaos. Yeah, yeah. constant. State. But I did it again. I do it every year because it's the only thing that soothes me. So <laughs> I yeah. perfectly planned 2021. Hopefully we get to execute those plans. I will say this. 2020 was the first year I've never been able to follow through with my agenda perfectly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that is, it is an aberration. But also I thought it was, it's just about adapting all the time, right? So we had those problems right? And then with those problems, 
we just adapted and we came up with new ways of yeah. marketing, yeah. new ways of educating. And yeah, so I, I actually like it. It's, it's just different. So yeah, we had that COVID disaster. I mean, it's still going on, right? But like, we just adapted and we figured out a new way to market to get in front of people and boom. And I think it actually adds more value instead of just like bringing food into offices. We're really teaching real estate agents on what we're looking at. And it's like crash courses. So you're being a little vague. Okay. Because we didn't actually describe what our 2021 marketing plan is. Okay. And I almost feel like we should do another podcast on that. Okay. We'll do that in the future. Yeah. yeah. That's a um, rabbit hole. But to let you know what exactly happened is I have a tried and true method of how we market and December and January is usually what we call our sponsorship drive, which is when me and our marketing coordinator ECs are reaching out to all of our preferred partners trying to get in their offices physically. Well, clearly that's not really happening anymore. Most offices are actually still closed, although a few have opened up. So in 2021, we had to completely come up with a new marketing plan, which we'll tell you in another episode. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we can do this episode later. Yeah, I feel so. like we could flesh out our old plan and then flesh out our new plan. Neither, it doesn't mean the old plan was bad or the old plan wasn't working. The old plan did work for a pre-COVID world. Yes. But now we're in a post-COVID world, so we needed to change uh, our plan. Adapt, yeah, yeah. it's all, you're always adapting. Yeah, yeah so, so. But I don't the, wanna give it too much away. Yeah, so Move the on. next one is the raccoon. You mean the raccoon? Yeah, she wants to call it a raccoon. Yes, that comes from the Greek term, if you've ever, know, if you've ever seen the statue of the luakuan, which is a man getting eaten by a sea serpent, which is from the Iliad, okay. right before the Greeks bring in the horse. So it kind of merges the Iliad <laughs> into the Odyssey, depending on you know how classic you want to get. But okay. yes, raccoon is spelled the same way as Luakwan, so I call it the Ruakwan. So I lost everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it, you did. You lost everyone, <laughs> including myself. So the right here, the actually, I have a really cool raccoon story. Not that this has anything to do with it. I just thought it was a really nice statement I think piece. This guy is just a distinguished gentleman. Yeah, he's a statement. This distinguished. It's a gentleman. statement piece. Yeah, well, no, yeah. he's distinguished. Yeah. So for the listeners, what we're talking about is I have a piece of art behind my studio, and it's a uh, it's a raccoon in a tuxedo. It's priceless. He's not in a tuxedo. He's in really. He's dressed like Mr. Darcy. So he's more <laughs> of in a nineteenth century landed English gentleman's gentry costume so if you want to see it, it's on the youtube channel or uh, facebook you can find us there too as well so the um the next thing is is oh so my story yeah, i gotta tell my raccoon story, story. yeah <laughs> that's the add kicking in so the raccoon story is is when i was like two years in and i got to this home and i was inspecting it and it was like a dump you know like the the there was like five AC unit, window AC units all around the place. The The place was dumped. It was eaten up by termites. And they're like, yeah, whenever the sun hits this wall, all these bugs just start coming out of it. And I'm like, oh, you mean termite swarmers. But I was doing my normal routine. You know, I don't judge whatever you buy, what you got to buy, right? Every and, trash can needs its lid. <laughs> yes. So I was going through opening up all the doors, right? And I was, I opened up that door. And I was starting to open up the door and he slammed it. And I'm like, well, man, I mean, I got to open, I, I was like, I got to open it up. And the, it was a tenant. Sorry. It was a tenant. He was there and he slammed it. He's like, he's like, Oh no, you can't go in there. I'm like, well, why? And he goes, that's where the raccoon lives. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fair enough. And this was not a pet raccoon. No, <laughs> it was no. just a raccoon who lived in the closet. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we also on Instagram have a great raccoon video of Brendan coming face to face. Oh yeah, with the raccoon. That one went viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah It's he, on TikTok too, I think. Yeah. It no, be, I might be on TikTok, not Instagram. I have not posted that on TikTok. Oh, okay. Well, you need to post it on TikTok. Yeah, then. that that one. That's a good one. Yeah, Brendan yeah. comes face to face with the raccoon. Yeah. And it ends pretty good for both of them, actually. I hear they're pretty good friends now. So. Okay, so one more thing, uh, just kind of an announcement. Ashy is canceled. You know, Ashy. I'm sure everyone knows that. Yeah, well, yeah, they know it by now. But, you know, I actually really enjoy going to conferences. I know everyone has like their debates, which is better or whatever. But I actually just enjoy going to conferences every time I learn something new and I meet new people. Can I every say something? Se yeah. Ashy is never, is always, excuse me, a super spreader event. How many <laughs> times have we gone to Ashy and you've come home with the flu? Once. Well. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, so, but every year people come home horribly sick from Ashy. It's because they hold it in January, which is like flu season. I'm really glad they canceled. Honestly, I was a nervous wreck about it. Yeah, I know you were. Yeah, so Ashy's canceled. So we have to prepare a whole nother year for another 
another event but yeah okay yeah, i think it'll but next year it's in orlando which means we all get to go to disney world yay <laughs> i don't know what the whole thing is with disney you need to stop everyone likes stop being such a hater. everyone likes disney but i do not he, like does not he you need to lean into the magic and he cannot yeah the only they have star wars now which is okay yeah yeah <laughs> i told him we need to bring our entire team and get, and get a picture in front of the castle wearing our jackets. Yeah. I think that'd be amazing. So talking about that too, we plan on bringing a majority of the team to the next event too. So that's pretty nice. We created a new marketing style, which we talked about in the first, and that's a whole nother podcast about yes. Profit First. The new accounting style of Profit First is a whole different podcast as well that I'm really excited to talk to you about, but I'm not quite done with it yet. So we probably should do yes. that once. Yeah, we, we're uh, still working out the, the kinks of yeah. like the percentages. All right. So going actually into the podcast and Mary, he has an introduction. He wrote an email, very well thought okay. out. Ken? Ken, okay. yeah. Ken had a very well thought out email and uh, we're going to go over the questions real quick. I just want to read to you a little bit of the introduction. I'm not going to read the whole introduction. just want to read to you a bit. So you see where Ken is coming from. Okay. Uh, Ken is from Wisconsin, and he says, I have watched the interview with Tucker Inspection, shout out to Tucker Inspections, and the interview about marketing with the inspection company Ohio. Is that Steve Reckner? Steve Reckner. Shout out to Steve Reckner. From what I'm gathering, that Inspection Whisper is a coaching and mentoring site. I've come up with some questions to ask. If you get some time and want to answer them, I would be very grateful. Well, Ken, that time is now. (laughs) So let's go ahead and start. And I will warn you, Ken sent us like, He was not joking when he had said he had some question. Yeah, so we're going to do, we have only an hour in this podcast, so we are going to crash course a lot of these questions because each question by itself could be a whole podcast, I would believe. So some of these I'll just go ahead and answer if that's okay. Yeah, and then I can drop in my two cents on some of them, yeah. What or where do you use for content to put in your email drip campaign? So describe that first. So I was going oh, to. God. Why are you trying to leave me? It's <laughs> acting like I've never done a podcast before. Homegirls, check it out. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Nice drop. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so for our email drip campaign, um, we use our YouTube videos. So ECS is in charge of the email drip campaign. She sends it out every other week. We used to send it out once a week, but we got a lot of complaints that once a week was too often. So we send it out every other week, and we just attach a snazzy title. We do a little blurb about what's in the video, only two or three sentences, and then we attach the video. And then at the bottom, we just said, want to schedule a home inspection? Click here, and we have the link to schedule a home inspection. And that's it. That's the email drip campaign. There is literally no thought. So so there is thought behind it, but what the thing is, is it actually goes to the beginning of the po- uh, the podcast, what we were talking about, over planning, overthinking it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't really have to think about it too much. The, the, the main goal of the email drip campaign is not so much the content in it. It's more of them seeing you weekly or bi-weekly. Yeah. How often do we do it? I just said every other week. Yeah, You're I know that. I was listening. You never listen. <laughs> this carries over into personal as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so next question. I heard what you put into your buyer's agent thank you notes. What do you say in the seller agent thank you notes? Also, what do you put in the thank you notes for the open houses? So the seller agent thank you notes are very similar. But instead of saying, it was so nice to meet you, we just say, uh, we recently inspected your home at insert address here. We really enjoy working with you and your client. Please think of us next time you need a home inspection. And then we insert our usual blurb, just one or two sentences about what our company does. And then that's it. We have a closeout. Now for open houses, I would use my nice to meet you template, which just says it's nice to meet you. Um, And then again, quick blurb about what our company does. The important thing in these notes is you address how you are related to them. Because a lot of times if you just say nice to meet you, they're going to be like, I don't know who the heck you are. Right. So you would say nice to meet you at the open house at blah, blah, blah address. Right. That way they can put you at a time and place. But also with the open houses, when you're chatting with the agents, try to get one personal fact about them, whether they have dogs or their kids play soccer or something like that. And then drop that in the thank you note as well. That'll really reinforce the fact that not only you are listening to them, but that you care about them and then, you know, that you would care about them as a client. 
as well. Right, exactly. And so, and remember the open house, you have, it's just like a quick, quick chat. So whatever you mentioned in there, you could talk about that bathroom or the kitchen or some sort of hobby. You could say, Hey, nice to meet you. I enjoyed talking about whatever. And then it's, so they're just reinforcing who you are and how they remember you. So the next question is, what are your thoughts of paying inspectors and co- as contract employees rather than by the hour? So we, um, the contract is hard because I guess he's talking about 1099 here. Or right. he's talking about W-2. No, he's talking about 1099. So okay. contract employees are 1099. And this is a great question. And this actually goes to where you are located. So yes. each state is different. So like California, I know that they got in trouble over there because they had 1099 and they were paying them on a commission. And apparently as 1099, you can only pay hourly or something. I don't know the actual thing behind it, but the biggest answer to this question is you have to really figure out what works in your state and what is legal because every state is different. I can tell you what we do in Texas. We do a W-2 and we pay them on commission based on the job. Yeah. So it's commission on a W-2. Commission on a W-2. Which sounds, in a lot of states, again, you can't do it because it sounds impossible. It is possible to do in Texas and it is a great way to pay people. They love it. We love it. And yeah. Benefits. Yeah. So the comp depends on your state, though. It does. It does depend on your state. So some states do not allow W two and commission. You can get in trouble by doing that. And then also, if you ten ninety nine them, they do not have to be loyal to your company. So you cannot. They can go and work with other inspection companies, and they can also do inspections on their own, even if you have a non compete. So you can't be a contract employee and sign a non compete. So th- that's something that you need to keep in mind too, as well. That depends on your state as well. Yes. Non-compete laws depend on your state as yep, well. Yep, it does too, yep. So the, the answer to your question is you got to look up your state yeah. laws. Figure out what they do in Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, all right, this is for you, Chris. What is your process for going to open houses? Do you spend all your time with the realtor? So suggestion for topics of discussion. So I never did open houses. That was before my time. I guided you. I helped you make the treats for the open houses, yes. but I did not physically do them. Um, cause I had a different job then. But. So obviously this changes every now and then with COVID, uh, COVID, it makes it to where I guess you probably don't make them treats, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And also are people, there are some people doing, open oh houses. yeah, they still do open houses. Okay. That's, so yeah, just really be aware of typically the agent will post when you walk through the door with their COVID preferences or what oh. the seller's COVID preferences. So first thing, when you walk in the door, take a note of what do you need to wear booties? Do you need to wear masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, everything like that. Yep. Follow it to a T no matter what you think. So when you're, wa- when you're doing this home, um, open house strategy, the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind about is Remember, their time is valuable and so is yours. So yes, you are meeting them, but remember they're working. So if you see an agent in there and they're talking with clients or whatever, you let them do their job and you know leave them be as much as possible. Um, you maybe can grab a card, drop your card off and leave. Uh, but say they're in the house by themselves, right? Well, they're bored. They want someone to talk to. The, and most agents that are doing open houses are newer agents, and they probably don't have someone to go to as well. And so whenever you're talking with them, you know, chat with them a little bit, you know, five, 10 minutes and get their information. That's the most important part. You can give them your information all day, but remember they're working. They're going to meet a lot more people. Take out their information, go sit in your car, write that thank you note right away so you don't forget about it and then move on to the next one. So really it's real quick. It's not, hey, I'm going to spend hours with you. It's a quick chat because they're working, right? So are you. You get their information, hop in your car, do the letter, move on. Yep. Perfect. Now, this is a question for me. What was your criteria to hire your marketing coordinator? Forgive me for asking for a ballpark range as to what you originally started EC South at. Yeah, at. Well, couldn't finish that. At. So our criteria to hire a marketing coordinator is we wanted someone um, with a degree in communications or marketing strategy or digital media. And ECUS actually has a degree in digital media. Uh, we were looking for a college student. So we had no, we didn't really need prior work history because we knew that a college student 
they're gonna be the ones that really understand how social media works. ACs understands it better than we do because she is the perfect age to completely understand social media. Chris and I are actually starting to be kind of old people. No, now. no, no. Yeah. Uh, but ECs understands it. She's Generation Z. You know, we're millennials. She gets more of the current trends. So hiring a college student for the social media stuff was the best thing we ever did because she really knows everything that's going on. Also, um, because she has that degree in digital media, she was able to pick up Adobe Premiere really fast. She's able to not only do our marketing side for us, but any digital content we need, she does. She's made logos for us. She's made flyers for us. So uh, having someone with that degree allows you the breadth of experience to kind of have them fill in all the gaps you need. Now, as far as salary, I'm not going to exactly tell you exactly what we started her at because that is EC's business. That is her personal business. But I will say you should do research for what is um, a good livable wage in your state. So we, um, you can go to Glassdoor. There's also a couple other websites that allow you to type in the person's age and their qualifications, and it'll actually spit out the best um, salary to pay them. And so with ECs, in my case, I went based on what I was actually paid when I first got out of college. Now, EC is eligible for raises every year, just like our inspectors. Also, she gets a cut of um, our social media proceeds, so our YouTube commercials and our Amazon tool list. So every time you watch a YouTube channel or buy something from our Amazon tool list, you are helping pay ECs because that is part of her. She gets a, she gets a basically a bonus every month. Right. Yeah, we, we max out a certain dollar amount. So actually, I do all of this practically for free. <laughs> well, not only that, she also helped, she did all the graphics for the HIW guidebook. So if she you've did. seen that and you've seen how amazing it looks, that was all easy. So she actually gets, every time you buy a guidebook, she gets a proceed from it as yes. well. Yeah, that guidebook is really good. So we Chris could talk about I, that in a second. <laughs> Chris and I are firm believers in paying people fairly and for what they're worth. And we, and we've said this, said this a lot, even to each other, we will pay ourselves less first just to make sure our people are paid well enough because happy employees are loyal employees and they, and we, I know it sounds cheesy, but we consider we're small business. Everybody is working for the greater good. No right. one person is less important or has a lesser job. So everyone needs to be paid fairly. And especially in the home inspection in, uh, business, since we are all somewhat independent, I actually consider every single one of these are our, our employees a part owner. So they, I would say they kind of own a portion of a action. I would say they own their specific job. Right. Like they are in charge of themselves, really. Yes. So they are the owners of that specific job. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I think like the, that, why that, you ask that, that was a that was a, no, it was a rabbit hole. But the main goal, uh, whenever we hired Isis, it was what the main goal was to take over all social media mm -hmm. and then take a lot of the tasks that you were doing that were slowing your job down. So mm -hmm. the letter writing, thank you notes. Thank you notes. And so Isis does not answer phones. That is not her job. Her job is to mainly marketing. Her job is to further the image of the business. Right, yes. And even writing thank you notes sounds mundane, but that's a huge part of our marketing plan. No, it's huge, yeah. It's huge. Um, and so ECs is amazing. We have been very fortunate to have her on our team. So you've probably heard us talk about it several times now, but never underestimate the power of a handwritten note. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah, the handwritten note has a lot of meaning behind it. So make sure that you're using that. All right. right. So what's uh, the next one? So this one is for you. Do you have any other book or recommend recommended reading material other than the Whisper guidebook? So... The home inspection was so that this would be a business book, right? Yeah, probably yeah. A, a business. You probably throw some self help in there. Yeah. So, I most of my books that I read are self help books or you know business mind frame books, and the first one is I would say, and not that it's big. I, my, my mind's changed a few times, but it puts you in the right mind frame, and that's the times ten effect from Grant Cardone. Um, not that I agree everything that he says, but the times 10 effect actually has a huge um, impact on me on the mind frame that you have to have whenever you're working. The The second one is Grant Cardone, not Grant Cardone, Gary V's book. And man, so, it's something hustle. 
I can't remember the name of it right now, but that one is really good too because it helps you understand social media and how, and how it can impact your business. And the third one I would say is never split the difference. And it kind of sets your mindset on negotiating. And it's not everything that you do, every conversation you have is some sort of form of a negotiation and it can help you better talk to people. So I'd, I'd start with those three books. Can I add one? Yeah. I would add profit first. If you're confused oh. about how to do your accounting, um, you don't need to be an accountant to run your books, people. I, I have an MBA, but I did not concentrate in accounting. I only took two accounting classes um, and I run all of our books. Uh, profit first is a great way to learn how to run your books, how to save money, how to cut things out. Um, and then how to rearrange your finances. You can even use it on your personal finances. Too. Yeah, yes, yeah. So yeah, Profit First has actually that we implemented it this year and I can already tell the change. It removes a lot of the stress, stress Yeah. Uh, because with the, the longest time, you know, obviously we were new to business. We've been doing it for eight years. So I'd still say you're almost new sometimes. And the you're always like, well, I'm spending less than I'm making, so I'm okay, yeah. you know, and- and that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. So what we did is it really divides up all your bank accounts and it, it can help you in the long run. And I think we should add that in the guidebook. We should update it. Well, yeah, but I need to finish it first. Yeah. I'm part of a, what I keep saying, finish it. I know how to read, uh, but we, I'm in a um, Profit Post book club that's run through the Buffini program, which by the way is another excellent program if you're looking to learn how to market. Um, and the it's very slow so we meet every couple of weeks to talk about a different chapter so we're only on chapter nine and i want to wrap up the entire book club program before i add profit first into the handbook because i really want to make sure i understand it thoroughly um and i was going to ask oh that's by mike michelson his name is literally mike michelson it's michael <laughs> michelson that's uh what profit first yeah Oh, uh, yeah, that's funny. But he goes by Mike Michelson. You're not fooling anyone, Michael Michelson. All right, so that's the books. Yeah, so next question, and um, this is also for you. In your sample reports, you have included detailed drawings. Are they from Code Check? Um, so they're, they're actually a little bit from all over the place. Some might have been from code check. Some are from like the Hardy manufacturer. Some are just some random images off online. And they are important that you add them in to your comments because it helps better explain what you're talking about to your client. Cause you got to remember most of the time, whenever you're explaining something, they're you know, they're rocket scientists or, you know, biologists, but they don't build homes. So they're going to have a hard time understanding what kickout flashing is or, or Z flashing or overhead flashing. And by you having these detailed drawings in your, your comments, it helps you out. Also, while I'm talking about the comments, that's a great question. We do sell the comments online and someone did get on to me. They want an index. So I'm, oh my God. I'm going to work on the index. Make it's, Josh work on the index. It's going to take some time. There's 3,000 comments there. Yeah. Or no, actually, well, the new update will have 3,000 comments. I think that one has 2,400 comments. But if you do purchase the comments or anyone in the past purchased the comments, anytime we update them, we actually resend them back out to everyone that's pur purchased them in the past. So we will work on the index. It'll take some time. So um, do you? the next question I'm actually going to talk about first. Okay. And I'll pass it to you. How do you forecast your first five years? Did you plan five, six, or seven days? Also, how many inspections a day did you plan for? So this question we kind of answered in the beginning of our podcast that home inspection business is unpredictable. It's almost impossible to truly plan. They always say, make a business plan, make a business plan. I got an MBA, it was all make a business plan. No. <laughs> so, what was that? <laughs> so you, the thing, the. The reality is, as I stutter out of my funny voice, um, the real estate market is unpredictable. And 2020 is a fantastic example. I told you I planned my 2020 out, December of 2019. I was ready, first year of the new decade. And by January, I was going great. I was hitting all my offices. I was doing my lunches, writing, ECS was writing the thank you notes. Uh, we were doing a podcast. And then what happened in March? We yeah. literally thought we didn't have a business anymore. Yeah, it was close. I mean, yeah. there was a week when our county judge was ready to shut everything down and literally could have run us out of business permanently. So that just shows you how unpredictable the real estate business is. 
And then by April, not only did we still have a business, but for some reason, people were buying homes more than ever. Yeah. And that has continued into December. To, um, November to February are typically our slow months, and we're just now getting somewhat of a slowdown, and that's only because we're about to hit Christmas. Actually, I want to give a quick shout out into that, what you just said, is to Brian Buffini. Brian Buffini actually... He is a real estate coach and he predicted that that would happen. He said, actually, what's going to happen is everyone's going to move into their homes they're gonna re- and they're going to be working from home and realize they don't like their home and everyone's going to go and buy bigger homes. And that's exactly what happened. And everyone's buying new builds more specifically. Yeah. So I'm, I have to say I am thankful to the Houston Association of Realtors who actually went to the Harris County judge and the Harris County mayor and said, you cannot shut down real estate. Yep. So I am eternally grateful. Shout out to HAR for that. Um, but the fact is that just shows you how unpredictable our lives are in this industry. You can't really make a successful five or six or seven year plan. Okay. Yes. And, and now, um, he wants to know how many inspections a day did you plan for when you were first starting out? So that's a great question. And so some inspectors, whenever I first meet them, they go and they'll work seven days a week and do two or three jobs every day, seven days a week. And that's one thing that you want to make sure that you don't do because you're going to burn yourself out really fast. Um, I worked six days a week for four years doing two jobs a day every day for a very long time. And then I, I, my year five, I had a burn out face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And year five, you really didn't want to do anything. You were grumpy. You didn't even want to run the business anymore. Yeah. You know? Was- yeah. So I burnt myself out really bad. So what you want to plan for, what I recommend is doing five days a week, whatever five days you want and do two a day every day as as much as you can and start with I used to do 10 and 2 but I actually found out that it's better to do 9 and 2 and have that 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. yeah 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and that so you have that little bit of a break and that gives you a lot more time with your clients a lot more time with the house you're never stressed about any weird situation that's going on you can always make it to your appointments I am a big fan of 10 and 2 because I like to sleep, (laughs) Uh, but 9 and 2 is better for your clients. That's what I found out. And you're able to really talk to them. You don't have to rush out the door. And sometimes you're there for four hours. Sometimes you're there for two and a half hours. And if you are only there for two and a half hours, just go and have a really nice lunch or take a nap in your truck somewhere, you know? (laughs) And that first year, you know, I worked full time. I worked outside of the business our first couple years. And um, there were whole weeks where you only had one or two in oh, the whole week. So that's actually really good, too, because uh, I have an inspector that reached out to me recently and he was saying, man, I'm not getting anything. Well, number one, it's it's December. Yeah. You know, Mark. Not a good time to start a business. So if you're starting your business in October, October, November, December, January is going to be extremely slow. We're actually writing off the marketing we did during the summer. What does Ryan Buffini say? It's 90 days. 90 days. Yeah. So every time you market, it takes 90 days for something to happen. So that being said, there, there was a lot of time where I was just playing video games and I was started like really searching for off jobs. You know, I was looking at how to clean gutters, you know, maybe picking up some sort of office assistant job. And, you know, I was panicking just like everybody else out there starting their first business. Don't do it. Just wake up every morning with a plan, a goal, go out there and market and then come back and wait. Who told you to chill out? You did. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So the biggest thing is, is just if you want to do this, remember, it takes a long time. And my first year, I did 155 jobs and and it it was lucky, you know, in a way I got I met one really top producing agent down in League City. Uh, Shout out to her. Her name's Deborah Bly. And she gave me like 40 jobs my first year. And I mean, her whole team, right? It wasn't just Deborah that did it, but it it was her whole team. And man, that's how we ate. Yeah. I mean, I had a job, (laughs) Yeah, but I had two actually. So, and the next thing I want to say about that too, is if you're out there and you're doing business, your first three years, none of that money is yours. You know, you need to dump that right back into your business your first three years, buying better tools, better marketing stuff, you know, better vehicle, do what you got to do. And can you imagine if we had had profit first 
um, year of business or those first three years, if we had been able to implement profit first, those first three years of business. Oh, that would have been nice. If we would, yeah, we would have had a completely different financial outlook. Um, so that actually contradicts what I said, how the first three years, the money's not yours. Actually implement profit first yeah, right away. And first. there is a small chunk of change that is yours. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, this is another one for you. How did you know when it was time to add your second inspector? Okay, so that is a great question. And the best time to do it is as soon as you realize that you're booked out six days, you know, six or five days, you have too much work lead. Uh, it normally in the real estate market, you only want a three day work lead. So anything over three days, it's going to, it's, you're going to start losing business. So right at five years, uh, right at the five year mark, so five year, wow, right at the five day mark, five, six days, and you're booked out, you want to start trying to plan on hiring someone new. If you want to grow your business, some people don't want to be a multi inspector firm. And in a multi inspector firm, just stay, stay right there. So if you hit that five day mark, start raising your prices, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, raising prices is a good way to change the dynamic of your business. Um, and your clientele. Yep. Yep. So um, this one, you're probably going to have to ballpark. Okay. How many inspections did you do your first six months and the first year? So the first year, I've already answered that. 155. And how do we know that? Because that is a number we talk about all yeah, the time. It is. Yep. That's just kind of ingrained. It was it really like, I did it. You yeah. Know? Um, six months. It okay. was... It was very little. Very little. <laughs> yeah, my first six months, you got to realize my first month, I only did one job. My second month, I only did two jobs. And at that mm. point, in those first six months, you were commuting from Dallas to Houston to work. Yes. Because yeah. we were essentially homeless. We yeah. had no place to live. Yeah. And so we were living with your parents in Dallas. Yeah, 400 mile yeah, you know, round, round trip. trip. So yeah. sometimes, shout out to your Aunt Sandra, who let you sleep at her house. <laughs> yeah. um, his Aunt Sandra lived in Spring. Yeah. Um, and you would commute from Dallas to Houston. And then sometimes you'd come home. Sometimes you would stay with your Aunt Sandra. So right. those first six months were really Tough. choppy. And yeah. then I managed to finally get a job in Gal uh, Galveston, which is why we moved to League City. So w all my inspections came in during the summer. Yeah. So... That means like the first few months. I mean, I literally probably only did 12 my first few months. Yeah. And then everything came in over the summer and then a little bit over, you know, the Christmas Thanksgiving break. So and that, I want to add when you were commuting down, you weren't just doing the inspection and then twiddling your thumbs. You were then going to open houses or doing breakfasts or lunches. So yep. you were making the most of your time. Your free time, really, not really free time. Your your anxious time, let's yeah. call it that. I didn't get free time for like seven years, six yeah, years, actually well, six years. That's a little bit of an over exaggeration. It's not. <laughs> Some of us still don't have any free time. Um, okay, the last question, and we have about eight minutes left. So this is a doozy too. What mistakes did you make your first year? So, um, it's a whole nother podcast. That is a whole nother podcast. So the first mistake, you know, it's kind of a sensitive one, I guess, is don't go into business with your family. So if you have, if you, you are running a home inspection business and you have a family business and they don't go into partnership with your brother or your best friend or your family, because, you know, so anything could happen. But who can you partner with? Oh, your wife. <laughs> that's okay. And the reason that's a whole nother podcast too, I guess. But yeah, with your wife, you actually have two 100% separate jobs, yeah. you know, so that's nice. So the biggest mistake I would say is, you know, don't go into business with your family. If you do want to get into the home inspection business, make sure that you um, just start a whole new thing in a different location and it's just completely yours and it's by itself. So the problem with family is there's emotions and, yes. and emotions are messy. Not that there aren't emotions in a marriage. It's just that we have two separate jobs. But when you're running a business with your family, there's everyone kind of has the same job. There's some headbutting. There's some superiority. Yep. Like, can your family members really be your boss? Do you want your family members to be your boss? Um, 
And it makes the holidays really awkward, et so, cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so that was that was the first one was uh, that was the biggest mistake I think I made. And then the second one is I probably didn't take care of my truck very well and it died. It once died on the toll road and that was it. It went into sudden cardiac arrest and death on the toll road. Yeah, so then it took I took you four hours to get towed <laughs> off the toll road. Yeah. All the places. Yeah, so take care of your vehicle. Yeah, because you're, you know, you're doing a little bit of everything all over the place and then you can't, it's, it's hard to take care of your vehicle at the same time. So don't, that's your most important tool is your truck or your vehicle, whatever you're driving. Yeah. I think, you know, you also learn through that first year how to properly talk to clients. You know, there's a lot of buzzwords that can become what um, might be known as deal killers or something that scares the client. So you learn how to talk to the client properly. And yeah. it's okay to make mistakes. It really is. Yeah. I, I have, my whole business is built on mistakes. Yeah. You know, so it just it's just a matter of how you overcome those mistakes. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's it. So that that was a great, really great questions, a really great content, uh, Ken, uh, for yeah. sending that email. And if you want us to answer more emails on this podcast, stuff like this is awesome. And even if we are repeating it, it just means, you know, it's lost in the content back there. It's okay to ask the same question. I might answer it completely different. Yes. And if you're watching this on live or on YouTube and you have questions, the actual best way to get us to answer the questions is through email. Right. Only because when we're on live or through YouTube, we actually can't read what you're writing as we're talking. Yep. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, make sure you email them. That's essentially what we're trying to say. Email us. People. Yeah. The best way to find out where to email us is at homeiw.com. And that's where we sell our comments, the book, the guidebook on exactly how we operate. And yeah. And remember, whenever you buy the guidebook or those tools or watch a YouTube video, you're paying EC. So yeah, keep it up. Do that because she definitely deserves all that money for all of her hard work. All right. So that being said, thank you for listening to the Home Inspection Whisperer show. And we will keep this up once a week as much as we can. And thanks for being patient while I put the office back together. Yes. And thanks for having me today. I had a really good time chatting with you. Um, We'll meet up probably in a few weeks to talk about our 2021 marketing plan. Why don't we do that in January? 2021 marketing plan, January. January? That yeah. sounds that sounds good. Yeah. We can do that. All right. I'll see you in January then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a four-week vacation. We have a three-story house. I'm on the third floor. He's on the first floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. And catch us on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.